It's probably my first sit down videos. So whoever is watching this video, I think, not I think, I know that you are somebody who's coming from LinkedIn. I'm not somebody whose video is monetized or something. So obviously people are not going to find it by default. People are coming from LinkedIn and you might discover me there and then now you're watching this video. So a little do you know that it's been three years or to be exact, it's 2.9 years of me researching um, neuroscience and psychology to understand human brain on a deeper level, right? This is something that I often talk about. And not only I've been independently researching and writing a paper, but also I've done the practical stuff. I actually went to the lab and I've I have seen neurons. <laughs> I have seen neurons. It's still going on, like I'm still researching and I'm still writing a paper. Everything that I've learned, I've applied it in my own life. And when I did that, I didn't really notice it in the beginning, but slowly I've I realized, or I'm still realizing that, that I grew too much within a very short period of time. Now that I think about it, there are a lot of things that helped me and I think it's, it might help you as well. So if I give you a little bit of background about myself, I'm not the type of person you would like to hang out with. I'm like really boring. I'm the type of person that you used to hate in school. Like I would wear those glasses and I would study. I would study so much and I would read so much. I would learn so much. I'm like such a sucker for knowledge. I am that type of person and I still am. So if I talk about my personality, it can be extremely boring to most people. I almost work all the time. Like that's why I say I have a boring personality. I always work. Now that I think about it, it's not like I was not working before and suddenly I started working and I grew too much. I was always working this hard, but nothing really worked out for me until recently. And now I wonder like what exactly changed so much because I'm the same person. I still do the same kind of things. It's not like I became an outgoing person or I became, I changed certain things in my personality. I'm still the same, but what changed is the type of wisdom that I have now. And I'm so certain that I'll just write it down and give it to you. If you think that I've done something which is a little bit more than average, that happened because of the type of wisdom I got from the research. During the research process, I've learned so much about neuroplasticity. I've learned about quantum physics, how energies work, how frequencies work, how we can rewire our brain for success, how we can register different belief systems in our subconscious mind. and all of that. I finally feel confident to talk about this. Now there are multiple topics that I want to share but I'm not sure if you'd be interested. So I'm just going to share a couple of my stories and if you think it's beneficial to you and you would also like to learn more about it then you can let me know. Something that I learned about possibility. In quantum round there's a billion possibility of how your life can be. What does this mean? It means that you can be anything you want to. The possibility is unlimited. Whichever you believe in, you become that. But it doesn't happen overnight. Now, what are these possibilities in the universe? There's a possibility of you begging on streets. There's also a possibility of you become a millionaire or billionaire. Anything is possible, quite. So whatever you believe in, you kind of choose that path and eventually you become that. Now, if I talk about the scientific point of view, the reason why you think that it's not possible for you to achieve or the reason why you're not able to achieve is somewhere in your subconscious mind, you don't believe it. You might have heard about affirmations, you know, if you say that multiple times, if you say that I'm rich, I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, whatever. Even if you're saying it hundred times a day, you wouldn't become that. And there's a lot of misinformation about this. Like I've seen a lot of affirmation videos where people are saying, if you write it down hundred times, it will get registered in your brain and then you will eventually become that. It only works if your subconscious is programmed the same way. It doesn't work if you just say it. Your brain is so intelligent. Like if you keep saying that I'm healthy, I'm in my best weight, and at the same time you're eating junk food um, every day, your brain is basically laughing at you and saying that, hey, I'm not stupid. What the hell do you think I am? Unless your brain is completely convinced and saturated by that one thing that I wanna be healthy, consciously and subconsciously, unless it's fully convinced, it's impossible for you to achieve that. Now let's take a huge example. We all have far-fetched dreams. Like somewhere in your heart, you want to do something really great. You want to buy a house, you want to buy a car, you want to have the best friends around, you want to have the best people in your lives. So these are common desires, but most of the people don't have it because in their subconscious, they believe that they don't deserve it. Now, how would you even know that what's registered in your subconscious and what's not? Now, that's another discussion. Maybe I would talk about this in another video if you find this one helpful. Let's take an example of a car, an expensive car, let's say a Ferrari, right? 
if you tell yourself that I want a Ferrari and if you keep saying that I deserve it, I deserve it, I deserve it, your brain is still not convinced. You still know that I can never afford it. You still know that I just earned peanuts. Like how can I even think about affording it? But you're basically gaslighting your brain to say that, no, I want it, I want it, I deserve it. It doesn't work that way. If it works, then how exactly it works? Uh, something that's very far-fetched, let's consider this F, right? And you are at A, point A. You are at point A and you are aiming at something which is at F. Now, obviously, like it's too far. You have a roadmap of B, C, D, E. Then you can reach F. So you have a lot of walls in between. It's reachable, but it's very far. And your brain is not even convinced at all that you can achieve it. It's some sort of gaslighting. The only way to reach there is by taking inspired actions or things that you have in your capacity. It's, it's something that I've added in my research paper as well. So basically, you, you don't need to figure out how would I buy a Ferrari. You need to start with the basics. For example, you need to see how much would it cost? Okay, it costs this much. How much do I earn? Okay, this much. What kind of skill sets I have or what can I do today at this time with whatever money I have, with whatever flexibility I have, with whatever resources I have, what can I do today to go to B? Forget about F. You just have to figure out the next step. Once you go to the B, you slowly you'll experience a progress. Okay, I make a little bit more money now. Then when B opens, your brain gets a little bit of confirmation that there is some movement happened. It's not like just you're saying it, but you're also doing it. When you go to B, you will see a possibility of C. You'll still not see a possibility of F, but you'll see a possibility of C. Now, when you are at B, obviously you're so much better than A, right? And the more you reach closer to the goal, the more you feel confident and the more you think it's achievable, the more your brain gets convinced that it's not that hard, come on. But when you're at A, it's so far-fetched, it's impossible for you to believe, or it's impossible for anyone to believe that I can buy a Ferrari with this peanut salary. It's not possible, right? So you're not supposed to focus on F and get scared like, oh, I can never do that. You just have to figure out B. You don't have to see anything else. I said, whatever ingredients you have, you have to make the best recipe out of the ingredient that you have. You're not supposed to say, oh my God, I don't have onions, how can I cook? If you have everything, then what's the point? You wouldn't have everything, but you would have something, something. If you're, first of all, if you're watching this video, you're so privileged. You have a device, you have either mobile or laptop and you have internet connection. You get to watch YouTube for free. These are huge privileges. Trust me when I say this, like, have you thought the people of Gaza? Have you thought about the women of Afghanistan? They are just, they're doing, they're just surviving. We are so privileged. Like this is something to be grateful for. And maybe I would talk about energies, like gratitude is the highest frequency we can ever have. And that changes your life also. There are so many things that actually changes your life. And I love it and I apply it. And it's just so transforming that not only I'm experiencing growth, but it also changed some of the other people's life whom I shared this information to. Um, but yeah, coming back to the topic, you will be confused and you would have self-doubts and you would think that you're good for nothing. That's A. F is perfect. Why would you expect that while you are an A, you would have so much of confidence and you would have everything figured out? If you have everything figured out, you're already at F. And for me, F was actually launching a global design podcast. I never thought in my wildest dream that I would go to a different country alone and then connect with the most amazing professionals out there and then we'll interview them. How do I even have the confidence to do that? <laughs> while I'm in nine to five, that's insane. First of all, you need to be delusional enough to believe it's possible for you. But that's not it. The real work happens when we take action towards it. Without action, it's a joke. Why are you even talking about it? If you're somebody like who doesn't want to take action, don't even learn UX design from me. Like, don't come to me. You have to take action, unfortunately. So if I continue with that example, it started. I started at A when I have zero knowledge about anything. I don't even know how to be a host. I don't even know how to invite people. I don't even know how to launch a global podcast. I, I don't know anything, right? What are the first step I could have taken with whatever I have at that moment? What are the things that I have in my capacity? For example, I can reach out to somebody on LinkedIn or I can cold email them, telling them that, hey, I'm doing this. Would you be interested to be a part of this? That's one thing I can do. That's in my capacity, right? It doesn't cost me money. 
The second thing I can do is that whichever country I'm trying to visit or wherever I'm trying to do, I need to figure out the visa process. Now I would go to Google and I would watch YouTube videos like how to get visa, like what is the visa process of this country. Now what else I have in my hand? Booking the flights. Now these are the initial steps. This is what pushed me from A to B. Now when I'm at B, I already have done some work. Now I have some confidence that I can go to C. Now this is exactly how I've achieved so many things in my life. Exactly in this process. You're not supposed to get scared at A and thinking F is impossible. It's possible. You just need to focus on B. You're not supposed to look at F and get scared. In this process, something will really help you is a vision board. If you don't know what a vision board is, I, I maybe I'll talk about it if you like this one. Um, but yeah, that, that helps you to visualize your goals better. I'm never gonna say it's easy. It's not easy, it's very hard. It's really hard, trust me when I say this. But it's not impossible. There is a billion possibilities, remember? There is a billion possibilities of how our lives can be. If you can, choose a better one. Why would you settle for less? Unless you're lazy. If you're lazy, don't come here. Now don't confuse laziness with smart work. There are a lot of entrepreneurs who, who are going to say if you're not lazy enough you cannot be a founder because how can you how can you make other people work? That's not really lazy, that's smart work. You are still taking action, you still have a roadmap, you still are thinking about it. Lazy means pure lazy. Like you don't even want to do anything, you want everything on your platter like ready. That's a different level of delusion. But yeah, there, <laughs> there is a good delusion and there is a bad delusion. But I just wanted to say that if you're interested, you want to know more, then let me know. Yeah, thanks for watching.